I've heard many things being said about HBAR. Everyone's like, oh, it's a granddad coin. Get it out of your portfolio, this, that, and the other. I know this isn't a popular project. I know it, it is with certain um, communities within YouTube and Twitter and different things like that. HBAR for me is a, is a solid project to have in your portfolio. Yeah, it's nice to chase 100x gains, 50x gains and stuff like that. It is good to have some of those in your portfolio as well because obviously you want to make as much as you possibly can. But I always think that things to have as solid, solid projects within your portfolio can only be useful. So I don't want to be going right and having a high, high risk portfolio where everything's a risk. HBAR's chances of going to zero are very, very slim. Some of the gaming projects that we mentioned, there's a chance of them going to zero. There legitimately is. Um, but we're trying to obviously make educated guesses and educated stuff on, on the longer shot plays. But HBAR for me is still a very solid port, uh, project to sit in your portfolio. It's in mine. Um, but I know a lot of people are like granddad coin, get rid of it. Obviously not financial advice, but HBAR is huge. Um, I've gone through HBAR before. You can have a look through the website yourself. The numbers are insane. So 4.3 million mainnet accounts created. The transactions in the last 24 hours of uh, 116 million, 3.17 seconds to consensus finality. The cost as well. So the average cost per transaction is very, very low. And yeah, the energy costs, because they will bring this out as some sort of narrative to save the, the trees and things like that, save the planet. Um, I don't necessarily think that climate change is anywhere near what they say it is. I think it's a very big, lucrative stealth tax on humanity, uh, but that's kind of my opinion on it. Uh, so HBAR is an open source public network governed by leading organizations around the world. We'll take a look at that now. Um, so this is one of the, the bullish, bullish things about HBAR. So Hedera's governing council is building the future together up to 39 collusion resistant organizations. Now, I'm not sure if they're generally collusion resistant, but there, there's space for 39 massive conglomerates. At the minute, I believe there's 30. Uh, Hitachi, uh, the latest to join that, which I'll show you in a sec. But if you look at some of the names on this, Chainlink Labs, Boeing, you know, IBM, LG, Dell, you know, it's it's monstrous. Google are in there. It's just huge. And uh, it's it's they, these companies are not going to be backing something that they think is going to go to shit, to zero. Yeah, HBAR is not massively big in terms of its advertising. You don't see it everywhere. But behind the scenes, it's doing so much. It's doing so much. So the um, Hedera Council adds Hitachi's America Limited as a newest member, bringing potential for real-world industri uh, industrial solutions built on, on HBAR or Hedera's DLT. You can have a look through this if you want. This is on their website itself. Um, the move heightens potential for highly practical use cases built on Hedera is grounded in IT, OT, and industrial experience. So Davos, uh, I don't like um, Davos. I, the, the, it's just, for me, it's a, a place where a lot of the elite organizations can can get together and basically decide the future of humanity in various different ways. Um, it's not my cup of tea, but I still think that if we can, you know, it, the same way as I've got Quant in my portfolio, same way as I've got HBAR, if we can go in, and make our profits off the back of where the smart money's going, then potentially, you know, we can we can exit, you know, their their paradigm almost. So this was on the 15th of January that the Hedera Council today announced its newest member, Hitachi America Limited. Hitachi, which brings with its industrial solutions expertise. Hitachi offers a broad range of electronics, power and industrial equipment and services, energy, industrial healthcare, IT, OT, mobility, and internet of things with operations throughout the Americas directly and through its subsidiaries. Hitachi aims to begin uh, creating proof of concepts for end-to-end -end supply chain and sustainability solutions on HBAR or on Hedera, on Hedera in the next year. So feel free to have a flick through this. It is quite interesting to see what they're trying to do. Obviously, HBAR were at Davos recently, the 15th to the 19th of January. There's a few different bits and pieces. A few different people were there. CSPR were there. <coughs> Excuse me, Quant were there, I believe. I'm pretty sure Quant were there. There's a few others that you can go through and have a look at. Um, here is something else that came as a, off the back of that, uh, EQTY lab brings open source AI, uh, integrity framework for hugging face community with industry first native Hedera blockchain integration. So this was again, aimed around, uh, climate change. So the, the releasing climate GPT on the hug and face community. So climate GPT powered by Erasmus AI and trained with AppTech is an ensemble of task-specific AI models designed to bring trust and transparency to the pressing challenges of accurate 
and authenticated climate data. How accurate that will be, I, I don't know. Um, probably not so accurate, but the, the belief is that it'll be accurate. The more people believe that, that these things, that climate change exists and things like that, to the, to the extent they're saying, then you will have people wanting to purchase this as their like goodwill way of doing things. Um, but because it will be such a narrative that we pushed in media, particularly in the mainstream, I think that will obviously funnel more adoption into people talking about climate change and ultimately talking about HBAR. This was interesting too. So this is Coinman the H Barbarian. I think this is funny. Uh, uh, Bar ha, Bar H Barian uh, is 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 um, is his account name. Go and, go and give him a follow if you wish. Uh, Hedera just surpassed thirty nine billion H Bar transactions. Massive. <clears throat> There's a billion transactions per seat on Hedera's global governing. Well, that's a billion transactions per seat on H Bar's on Hedera's global governing council. 30 world-class organizations have a seat already with Hitachi US being the latest and there's only nine spots left. It's going to be interesting to see what um, companies come in to fill the final nine slots. Um, and as it grows, it is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Hitachi are massive. And then we look at this as well. This is at HBAR row seven. I'm seeing more people complain about slippage charges or failed transactions. So HBAR suite as a zero slippage de dex uh, is likely to have um, it's less likely to have failed transactions as it's um, as it has direct interaction between the transacting accounts and not lots uh, not lines of contract calls. So that's this. I mean, it goes on a little bit further actually. So I'll show you that, and then we'll look at the actual product. Not only are the transactions less likely to fail, uh, H Suite will never charge you for a failed transaction. I think that's good because you know it, that is frustrating when that happens. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still trying to get rid of this illness. In rare occurrences, a uh, Hedera fee can can occur. Um, however, the fees are more than 75 times cheaper for a failed transaction uh, of HBAR, smart nodes, and smart contract DEXs. The DEXs on Hedera are fantastic. I give a massive credit to them all. HSuite spent many years trying to perfect the foundations in which the smart nodes exist. The infrastructure not only allows HBAR suite and features to thrive, but all other DEXs and enterprises can use this. In order for Hedera to be considered the dominant layer one, they need a tool like smart nodes. They'll enable that will um, enable Hedera to um, expand into other chains and everyday enterprises to be able to use the technology as a safe, scalable, efficient, and cost-effective way for true decentralization. So that's this product here. So H Suite, H Bar Suite Smart Node Network. So the new uh, powerful and agile DeFi tool to enhance the Hedera network and innovative technology called Smart Node to build groundbreaking DeFi applications. So if you flick through this, it gives you a few, a few little kind of examples. So smart node technology, either you wanna build a custom DeFi protocol or an enterprise private network using blockchain and Web3 as background for immutable data storage, the smart nodes are the solution that you're looking for. So you've got DeFi protocols there, private networks there. You obviously know the difference between those, smart node versus smart contract. This is where it's interesting. So build your Web3 solutions using only TypeScript, both for your backend and front-end solutions. Our SDKs will facilitate your journey as a Hedera developer by providing you a solid boilerplate and set of features to customize your needs. No memory limit. So while smart contracts on Hedera can be a maximum of 10 megabytes, 10 megabytes is obviously ridiculously low, um, small, sorry. Smart nodes uh, has no memory limit whatsoever. So it's obviously a bonus. Interoperability, while well, smart contracts can only interact with Hedera, Smart nodes can interact with any service and blockchain. Interoperability, I've said before numerous times, I think it's going to be really key. Chainlink's got interoperability services. Uh, obviously, Quant for me, I think it's going to be the biggest with its complete overledger. Again, have a little flick through this website if you wish. Have a good look. Um, HBAR Suite or why HBAR, HBAR Suite? HBAR Suite is the world's first carbon negative DAO to utilize innovative smart node technology deployed on top of the Hedera network with the ability to bypass smart contract limitations and risks. Our smart nodes enable infinite scalability, and that's obviously what we're always, look, we're always looking for scalability. Um, it's gonna, you know the bigger something can get, the better. If you look at its price currently, it is 0, 0.0, so it's seven cents, two point three percent up on the day. If you have a look at its max chart, you'll see the previous bull run. There you go, here topped out up here. Um, people are a bit concerned; they don't know when the token supply gets released, things like that. Uh, which is which is fair enough if you want to go down the route of, of not liking HBAR because some people don't, some people do. It's a, not quite a marmite as ICP is, but 
uh, a lot of people are a bit reluctant because they get bored very easily of their of their projects and hbar is one of the ones that fit into the category people get kind of bored of it um it's all-time high was back in september 2021 at 56 cents now you'll see a lot of youtubers in general saying that that four dollars is where they believe hbar will go i i'm nowhere near as bullish as that i don't think a 54x is happening for hbar i don't think it's going to reach 134 uh, billion dollar market cap so for the ease of use i'm looking at when i start uh, layering out i'm looking at around the old all-time high so just below 60 cents that gives us 20 billion market cap which is 719 percent up from where it is now um i still believe a dollar is is well achievable for h bar 2 which is the 13x at 33 um billion dollar market cap my top out price i think for h bar in this bull run is going to be two dollars i don't think it'll go any further than that maybe a few cents over perhaps something like that but i think around about two dollars it's kind of where I would be. I would be completely out. Maybe, like I said before, a five, ten percent bag to see if it can go to the four. But I don't think four dollars is likely to happen. Sixty-seven point three billion dollar market cap. Twenty-six x is the is the kind of the highest I can see from this point. Um, but obviously, a lot of people won't agree with that. People who have, have held HBAR for a long time probably saying four. I've heard even as high as ten. Um, it, I don't believe that to be the case during this bull run. I think like. I'm trying to manage expectations and get out with the, the the most potential profit available than holding for a number that doesn't exist or doesn't get hit for the for the bear market to begin again and us to be left holding this bag longer than absolutely necessary. And I don't want to be doing that. Um, if you look here, we've been early for a long time. Are we still early? It, you know, time is starting to run out in general in crypto. So 74 days now before the Bitcoin halvening. So it's becoming to the point now where people are, you know, I need to shit or get off the pot because we're, we're at that point now where if you're not into crypto by now, then you're really, really running out of time again. Not financial advice, just pointing out that the days remaining for the halving are 74. It's getting shorter and shorter as we go through. Here is the um, the Bitcoin rainbow price chart. At the minute, we're still in that basically a fire sale buy range. Um, and obviously DCA is, is the way I've been going forward. But over the last couple of months, I've just been sort of buying projects that uh, are, are very low in market cap to add to the portfolio, just to flush it out a bit more. So I've done that recently, um, while still adding HBAR on a DCA over the last kind of four weeks, and uh, maybe just under four weeks. We need to get to like here before we start worrying about things. Like I'm going to be looking at taking profits all, all the way along, provided that the, the targets in my exit strategy are hit. But if you look, you know, we've still got a long way to go in terms of where the price will go time wise though we're not we're not time rich at the moment here is the fear and greed index at the moment it's 61 um it's 61 and greed now last week it was neutral which was a much more um, palatable time to buy a lot of things are green in crypto right now uh, and that'll still obviously people tend to foam in when things are green they're buying these big green candles i don't do that i don't like doing that at all so at the minute today wouldn't be a buying day for me I don't want it to be in greed and I don't want big green candles to be purchased. I don't want to purchase big green candles. I, I like to buy the red candles because um, I feel as though you get, a, when you get the bigger bounce, you know, you, you get more bang for your buck and that's what I want to do. Lower average entry costs, keep things nice and simple and sell them when they get to, to the targets that I want to, uh, that I want to achieve in increments, 20%, 25%, depending on how, which project we're, that we're doing with, <clears throat> with H bar five stages of 20% is absolutely fine for me to layer out. But <clears throat> as I said, a lot of people uh, really, really like HBAR. A lot of people are just very ambivalent towards it. Think, well, you know, it's, it's a granddad coin. Get it out of your portfolio. Only new things should be in there. I disagree. I think a nice, healthy mix helps any portfolio personally. Um, but obviously, whatever side of the coin you sit on with that is entirely up to yourselves. Uh, if you like this video, please smash the like button. I always appreciate that you guys do that. Subscriber-wise, very close now to 3,000. 800 subscribers which is fantastic um looking to try and hit 4,000 as quickly as possible then the ultimate goal of 10,000 subscribers so if you haven't subscribed yet please do that if you wish um wherever you are in the world wherever you're doing have an amazing day have an amazing evening and as always i will see you tomorrow take care goodbye